Welcome to the NTA training video series. This video is intended to help you prepare for the E1 Residential Electrical Inspector exam. It contains study tips, sample questions, and examples of how to apply your knowledge in the field. To start preparation for your E1 Residential Electrical Inspector exam, you need to know what materials you need to begin studying. A good place to start looking is the ICC website. This is the same website used to register for the exam. Go to www.iccsafe.org. Once you are there, hover over Education and Certification and go to the second column, Certification and Testing. Click the arrow next to Certification Exams and a new drop-down will appear. Click the National Exam Info and Registration link. Then scroll down to the National Certifications Categories list and click on the plus sign to the right of the Residential Inspector category. Once Residential Inspector is expanded, you will see the various exams listed. Find Residential Electrical Inspector E1 and select Bulletin CBT. The documents shown here gives a breakdown of each exam and the materials which should be used for reference when taking the exam. The two books you can use to study are the 2015 International Residential Code and the NFPA 70 2014 National Standard Electrical Code. This course uses the 2015 IRC. Once you have obtained the appropriate reference materials, you need to get familiar with the books. Use the table of contents in the 2015 IRC to locate chapters 34 through 43. These are the chapters that cover the electrical section that you will need to concentrate on to study for the E1 exam. Begin reading these chapters starting with 34 and work your way up to 43, reading for about 15 to 30 minutes at a time. Keep in mind that the exam is an open book test, so after reading through these chapters, it's a good idea to go back and skim the text again to get familiar with the section numbers and titles. The goal is to be able to quickly identify what section you are looking for to answer the question, not to memorize the entire code. The E1 exam has 60 questions, and you will have two hours to complete it. Now we will look at some sample questions and ways to quickly identify keywords in the question to help you find the code section that will provide the answer. The table of contents and index are helpful tools for quickly finding what you need. It is also a good idea to create tabs for your books, so you'll be able to flip to pages quickly. The following are example questions from chapters 34 through 43. Practice finding key words within the question to locate the answer using the index, unless you already know what section contains the correct answer. In walls and ceilings constructed of wood or other combustible material, boxes, plaster rings, extension rings, or listed extenders shall be blank or project from that surface. Based on this question, you know you are looking for something that has to do with installation of electrical boxes. If you do not remember the exact section, try looking for the keywords in the index. A good keyword to start with would be boxes. Once you have found the keywords in the question and you have located one of them in the index, the code section will be referenced. Boxes are located in Chapter 39 of the 2015 IRC, Section E3906. Once you know what section to start in, you can use other keywords in the question to guide you to the right spot. Other keywords here are walls and ceilings. Now that you have found the code section, read the question again to make sure it is the correct section. Read your optional answers and find the correct answer within the text of the code. The correct answer for this question is flush with the finished surface. Take a look at these pictures to practice applying your knowledge in the field. Picture A is correct per E3906.5. Picture B is incorrect because the box is recessed into the drywall. A device intended to provide protection from the effects of arc faults by recognizing characteristics unique to arcing and by functioning to de-energize the circuit when an arc fault is detected. By reading this question, you can tell that you are looking for a definition. You should recall from your preparation that the definitions are located in Chapter 35 of the Electrical section of the 2015 IRC. You can again use keywords within the definition to narrow down the possible answers. You know you're looking for something to do with devices and how they protect from arc fault. In this question, the keyword would be arc fault. The answer to this question would be arc fault circuit interrupter. To apply this knowledge in the field, look at the electrical service panel, if one is installed. 
There are various manufacturers for breakers, and each have a way of identifying the breakers which provide arc fault protection. Services within the scope of chapters 34 through 43 are limited to blank. From your preparation, you should know that this is a general information question. General electrical information is located in chapter 34. Once you have located the right section, you can find keywords such as scope. This will take you to section E3401.2. The answer to this question is 12240 volt 0 to 400 ampere single phase systems. Working space in the direction of access to panel boards and live parts requiring service or maintenance while energized shall not be less than blank inches. The dimension in width is required to be blank inches wide, and the working space shall be clear and shall extend blank feet or height of the equipment, whichever is greater. The key word in this question would be working space. The index tells you that this is found in section E3606.2. However, it also directs you to read E3405.1 and E3405.2, which deal with the clearances around electrical equipment. The answers can be found within E3405.2, which are 36, 30, and 6.5. This picture shows you how to check the clearance at service panel boards in the field. There will be some true or false questions. These questions must be read carefully because one word such as may, shall, or shall not could make the questions false. Grounding electrode is a conducting object through which a direct connection to the foundation is established. You can tell by the statement that you are looking for a definition. From your preparation, you should remember that electrical definitions are in Chapter 35. Using the keyword grounding electrode, scan the text until you find the correct definition. The incorrect word in this question is foundation. Based on the text, it should be earth. Here is an example of a grounding electrode installed in the field. The green wire is connected to the rod going directly into the earth. If you have a number 2 AWG service entrance conductor, aluminum or copper clad aluminum, the minimum grounding electrode conductor size for aluminum or copper clad aluminum is blank AWG. The keyword here is grounding electrode conductor size. If you don't know what section to start in, look in the index for grounding electrode conductor and you will see the section for grounding electrode conductor size is E3603.4. That paragraph contains a reference to table E3603.4, grounding electrode conductor size. Find table E3603.4. Now that you have located the table, Read the question again to identify exactly what you were looking for. The statement says that the conductor size is 2 AWG, and you also know you are looking for the requirements of aluminum or copper clad aluminum conductors. Under the column for aluminum or copper clad aluminum, find the conductor size you are looking for. True or false, service entrance cables shall be supported by straps or other approved means within 24 inches of every service head, gooseneck, or connection to a raceway or enclosure, and at intervals not exceeding 60 inches. In this true or false question, read carefully to find any words that could make it false. Then choose keywords such as service entrance cables. If you use the index to find service cables, you will see it references chapter 35, which is definitions, but this is not a definition. Try looking for words similar to service cables by looking in the next section of the index, which would be service conductors. You will notice many of the options there are referencing sections E3603 through E3605. This would be a good place to start. Other keywords within the question, such as supported, will help you find the exact code section for the answer. Looking back through section E3605, you should find section E3605.7, Mounting Supports. The word support is your clue to read this section. Upon reading it, you will find that the 24 inches and 60 inches stated within the question is incorrect. The two measurements should be 12 and 30, making this question false. Minimum conductor size for a branch circuit rating of 20 amp is blank, and the maximum overcurrent protection device rating ampere rating is blank. The question is looking for two pieces of information. First, the minimum conductor size for a branch circuit that is rated for 20 amp, 
and second, the maximum overcurrent protection device rating ampere. Start in the index and use the keyword branch circuit. There you will find section E3702. Within this section, you will see various subsections which contain the words branch circuit. You should be able to narrow down the subsections by their title. The section you are looking for is E3702.14, Branch Circuit Requirement Summary. The text will reference table E3702.14. Once you have found the table, you can see it says Circuit Rating at the top. Based on the question, you know you are looking for the circuit rating of a 20 amp circuit. In the left column of the table under conductor is minimum size AWG circuit conductors. Go to the right in the 20 amp column and you will find the number 12 for the minimum size AWG circuit conductor. This would be the answer to the first part of the question. The second part of the question is about maximum overcurrent protection device rating. In the left column of the table, you will find Maximum Overcurrent Protection Device Rating Ampere Rating. Follow this section to the right until you get to the column for 20 Amp Circuit Rating. You will get to 20 for the Maximum Overcurrent Protection Device Rating. This is the answer to the second part of the question. The minimum conductor size for circuit rating of 20 Amp is 12, and the Maximum Overcurrent Protection Device Rating Ampere Rating is 20. What markings will be on type NM, NMC, and NMS cables, which show the cable assemblies are rated for 90 degrees Celsius? You are looking for how the NM cable will be marked to show the temperature rating of the cable assembly. If you do not know the code section, use the index to try and narrow it down. Start with NM, or non-metallic sheathed cable, because each one of the cables listed is a form of non-metallic sheathed cable. The index will have a few sections which you could reference. Start with section E3705.4.4. When you read this section, notice the second sentence reads, Types NM, NMC, and NMS cable identified by the marking NM-B, NMC-B, and NMS-B meet this requirement. The markings NM-B, NMC-B, and NMS-B on the NM type cable would show that the NM meets the requirement for 90 degrees Celsius. This would be the answer to the question. This picture shows the type NM-B on the NM cable. When wire runs across the top of floor joists, or runs within 7 feet of floor or floor joists across the face of rafters or studding in attics and roof spaces that are provided with access, the cable shall be protected by substantial guard strips that are at least as high as the cable. Where such spaces are not provided with access by permanent stairs or ladders, protection shall only be required within blank feet of the nearest edge of the attic entrance. This question doesn't have any good keywords that you might find in the index. However, you can determine what the question is asking by rereading it carefully. You should come to the conclusion that when wires are run across joists or rafters at an attic access, the wires must be protected within a certain distance. Since this involves the running of wires, it would be a good idea to start with Chapter 38, Wiring Method. Other words within the question can be used as keywords once you think you have found the correct section. Wires are running across joists and rafters which are structural members. Skim the code text to see if you can find something to do with rafters, joists, or structural members. You should find section E3802.2.1, Across Structural Members. The last sentence of the paragraph says, Where such spaces are not provided with access by permanent stairs or ladders, protection shall only be required within six feet of the nearest edge of the attic entrance. The answer to this question would be 6, from section E3802.2.1. This picture shows a wire that is not protected at an attic access. Conduits or raceways shall be sealed or plugged at blank ends, where moisture will enter and contact live parts. In this question, you are looking for how raceways and conduits are to be sealed. Go to the index and find the keyword raceway. The index lists raceway seals and references two code sections, E3601.5 and E3803.6. If you go to section E3601.5, it sends you to section E3803.6. There you will find the answer to be either or both. 
This picture shows how the conduit is sealed at the end of the run. True or false. Receptacles shall be installed so that no point measured horizontally along the floor line of any wall space is more than 8 feet from the receptacle outlet. This statement says that if you measured along the floor line of any wall space, there should be a receptacle within 8 feet. For example, if you measure from the entry into a bedroom and there is wall space in either direction, there should be a receptacle within 8 feet of the entry. The keyword here is receptacle. In the index, you will find receptacle outlet and required outlets in section E3901. Another keyword is space. So look within the code for a subsection that references spacing. Section E3901.2.1 spacing states that the required dimension is to be 6 feet, not 8. The statement is false. This picture shows how receptacles should be measured within a room. You will notice that a receptacle is required within 6 feet of each opening. At least one receptacle outlet shall be installed at each peninsular counter space with a long dimension of blank inches or greater and a short dimension of blank inches or greater. This concerns the receptacle requirements at a peninsular counter space. The keyword receptacle outlet can be found in the index which will guide you to section E3901. This section has multiple references for receptacle requirements. Use another keyword such as peninsular countertop to narrow it down. This should lead you to subsection E3901.4.3, Peninsular Countertop Space, which states that at each peninsular countertop space with a long dimension of 24 inches or greater and a short dimension of 12 inches or greater, the measurements of 24 inches and 12 inches would fill in the blanks to this question. This picture shows the peninsular countertop space requirements as well as the other kitchen receptacle spacing requirements. The peninsular countertop space is measured from the connecting edge. True or false? All 125 volt single phase 15 and 20 ampere receptacles installed in bathrooms shall have arc fault interrupter protection for personnel. Locate the word arc fault interrupter in the index and you will find a reference to section E3902. When you get to this section, you should notice the very first paragraph is E3902.1, Bathroom Receptacles, which specifies ground fault circuit interrupters, not arc fault interrupters. The statement is false. The bathroom receptacles are required to be GFCI type. This can be accomplished with either a GFCI receptacle or a GFCI breaker in the breaker panel. Breaker styles will vary, but GFCI will appear on the label. Foyers that are not part of hallways in accordance with section E3901.10 and are greater than blank square feet require a receptacle on each wall space that is blank feet or more in width. In this question, you're looking for receptacle requirements for a foyer. From previous questions or from studying, you should know that receptacle requirements are located within chapter 39. Skim through this chapter to find key words such as foyer. This should lead you to section E3901.11. Read this section of the code. You will find the numbers to fill in the blanks are 60 and 3. This picture shows a plan view of the foyer receptacle spacing requirements per section E3901.11. True or false. Where non-metallic sheathed cable is used, the cable assembly, including the sheathing, shall extend into the box not less than one half inch through a non-metallic sheathed cable knockout opening. You can find non-metallic sheathed cable in the index, which directs you to section E3905.3.1. Within this section, you will find the code text that states, Sheathing shall extend into the box not less than one quarter inch, making this question false. This picture shows the required one quarter inch NM cable through the box as required by section E3905.3.1. The maximum number of 14 AWG conductors in a 4 inch by 2 and 1 8 inch square box is blank. For this question, you are looking for the number of 14 AWG conductors in an electrical box. Using the keyword box, look in the index and you will be referred to section E3905. When you reread the question, you can see you are looking for how many conductors that can be installed in a 4 inch by 2 and 1 8 inch square box. As you skim this section, you will find section E3905.12.1, Box Volume Calculations. 
This section refers you to Table E3905.12.1. By using this table, you should be able to find the answer to the question. At the top of the table, you will find a heading of maximum number of conductors. Below this heading, the size of the conductor will be listed. From the question, you know you are looking for the conductor size 14 AWG. Go to the first column and locate the size 4 inch by 2 and 1 8 inch square box and go to the right until it meets the number under 14 AWG. You will find the answer to the question is 15. This picture shows how to count conductors in an electrical box. There is a 14-2 and 14-3 wire coming into the box which makes five conductors. The internal clamp counts as a conductor. The strap yoke is the device coming into the box counts as two conductors. The receptacle and switch have two conductors each, bringing the total to 10. The ground wires also count as a conductor. The total number of conductors in this box is 11. All switches and circuit breakers used as switches shall be located to allow operation from a readily accessible location. The center grip of the operating handle of the switch or circuit breaker at its highest point will not exceed blank. This question is asking about the operating handle of a switch or circuit breaker at its highest point. If you choose to use the index, use the keyword switch to find the correct code section to begin in. The index will guide you to section E4001. In the subsections, look for text that would have to do with access to a switch. This should lead you to E4001.6, Access. Read this section of the code to see if you can find the required height of the switches and breakers at their highest point. You will find that the maximum height at its highest point is 6 feet 7 inches. True or false? A circuit rated for 20 amperes shall have receptacles rated for 15 to 20 amperes. Ratings of circuits can be found in Chapter 40 of the 2015 IRC. Using the keyword receptacles, you will find section E4002 in the index. When you go to this section, you will see a subsection for two or more receptacles. Since the word receptacles in the question is plural, you know that you are looking for the requirement for more than one receptacle. This section will reference you to table E4002.1.2. You know you are looking for a circuit with a 20 amp rating. In the left column under circuit rating in amperes, locate 20. The right column lists the required receptacle ratings. From this table you will find that receptacles with a rating of 15 and 20 amps are acceptable on a 20 amp circuit. This makes the answer to the question true. This picture shows a 15 and a 20 amp receptacle. These are the receptacles that are acceptable on a 20 amp circuit. True or false? Receptacles in locations according to section E3901.1 that are 125 volt, 15 to 20 ampere, shall be listed as tamper-resistant receptacles. This question is asking where tamper-resistant receptacles are required. You can find the code section for receptacles by looking in the index. After you get to section E4002, skim the section to see if you can find the section which states the requirements for tamper-resistant receptacles. You will see section E4002.14, Tamper-Resistant Receptacles. In this section, you will find the answer to the question is true. Receptacles in locations per E3901.1 are required to be tamper-resistant. In this picture you will see a standard receptacle and a tamper-resistant receptacle. Notice how the outlets appear to have something covering them within the tamper-resistant device. Some tamper-resistant receptacles will also have a TR for tamper-resistant. Flexible cord for kitchen waste disposals shall have a minimum length of blank inches and a maximum length of blank inches. This statement is looking for the required length of flexible cord for a kitchen waste disposal. You should know that a kitchen waste disposal is considered an appliance. So if you use the keyword appliance to look in the index, you will find a section referencing electrical appliance installation. Go to section E4101 in the code and look for the part that concerns flexible cords. After reading this section, you will be referred to table E4101.3. In table E4101.3, you should see kitchen waste disposal in the left column. In the columns to the right, you will see the minimum and maximum requirements for cord length. You will find that the minimum length for flexible cord is 18 inches and the maximum length is 36 inches. The answer to fill in the blanks would be 18 inches and 36 inches. 
This picture shows a waste disposal under a sink. You can see the flexible cord plugged into a receptacle under the sink. In what table will you find the requirement for permanently installed heating equipment with motors rated at not over one-eighth horsepower with supplementary overcurrent protection? What is the requirement? You are looking for the table which lists the disconnect requirement for permanently installed heating equipment not rated more than one-eighth horsepower. You should know that heating equipment is considered an appliance, so use appliance as your keyword to find the code reference in the index, where you will find electrical appliance disconnect means, which refers you to section E4101.5 of the code. Within this section of the code, you will find references to table E4101.5. This would be the answer to the first part of the question. Once you have located table E4101.5, you need to find permanently installed heating equipment with motors rated at not over 1 8 horsepower with supplementary overcurrent protection. Once you have located this in the table, you will find the disconnect means in the right column. Disconnect on supply side of fuses in sight from supplementary overcurrent protection device and in sight of heating equipment or in any location, if capable of being locked in the open position, is the answer to the second part of the question. In this picture, it is showing the disconnect location at permanently installed heating equipment. Receptacles that provide power for water pump motors or other loads directly related to circulation and sanitation systems shall be permitted between blank feet and blank feet from the inside walls of pools and outdoor spas. Here you are looking for receptacle requirements that relates to swimming pools and water pumps. If you are not sure which section covers swimming pools, use the index and search for swimming pools. This will lead you to chapter 42. Once you have located this chapter, look for a section which deals with receptacles. You will find section E4203.1, Receptacle Outlets. In this section, it guides you to E4203.1.1, Locations. This is where you will find the correct answer. Receptacles serving water pumps or other loads directly related to circulation and sanitation systems shall be within 6 to 10 feet from the inside walls of the pool or outdoor spa. This picture shows receptacle location requirements in relation to the location of a swimming pool. You will see there are no receptacles permitted less than 6 feet from the pool's edge. Metal conduit shall be corrosion resistant and suitable for the location. The minimum covered depth shall be in accordance with blank. The minimum depth for rigid metal conduit is blank inches. This question is looking for the minimum depth of metal conduit as well as the minimum depth required. Look in the index for underground wiring and you will find that section E4203.7 references wiring installed in conduit underground. When you read this section, it will refer you to table E4203.7. The reference to this table would be the answer to the first part of the question. In this table, you will need to look at the left column to find the conduit material. Metal conduit would be under the rigid metal conduit category. If you go to the right, you will find the column for underground wiring. There you will find the minimum burial depth would be 6 inches. This is the answer to the second part of the question. This picture shows the depth of various types of conduit and the minimum requirements. As you can see, the rigid metal conduit is shown at 6 inches. What class 2 cables are for general purpose use and shall be listed as being resistant to the spread of fire and listed for the use? This question is asking what type of class 2 cable is for general purpose use and is listed as being resistant to spread of fire. Using the word cable as your keyword in the index, you will find that class 2 cables are located in chapter 43. Once you locate this chapter, skim the text to find a section which references the types of cable. When you come across section E4303.2.2 type CL2 cables, you will find text which reads, for general purpose use, shall be listed as being resistant to the spread of fire and listed for the use. Type CL2 cables would be the answer to the question. This picture shows a type CL2 cable with the UL listing. This is what you need to look for when inspecting this type of cable in the field. Any electrical circuit that energizes signaling equipment. This appears to be a definition dealing with signaling equipment. If you use the index, you will find this can be found under the Class 2 Circuits section which is in Chapter 43. 
Like other chapters in the code, it begins with some definitions for words within this specific chapter of the code. Starting at the beginning of the chapter, find where the definitions are located. You will see there are three words in the definition section. You are looking for the circuit that energizes signaling equipment. This should bring you to signaling circuit, which would be the answer for this question. This concludes the NTA training for your E1 exam preparation. A few key things to keep in mind when preparing and taking the exam are 1. Don't worry about memorizing the code, but work on being able to recall and find code sections quickly. 2. In each question, you can use keywords in the index to try and find code sections as quickly as possible. By using this technique, rather than flipping through pages and pages of the code, you will save yourself valuable time. 3. For multiple choice questions, try using the answers to help narrow down the possibilities. Some of the possible answers you should be able to tell are incorrect based simply on the question. 4. Be careful of words such as shall, shall not, may, or may not. These words could very easily make a question true or false. And 5. Study and prepare. No matter how well you think you know the codebook, always make time to study and prepare for these exams.